welcome. In this video, you will learn the principles of setting up your own digital note-taking system that will help you remember everything you ever want to remember. Hey på alla My name is Andreas. I'm a teacher from Sweden and I like to learn stuff. On this channel, I share things related to learning, education and personal development. If this sounds interesting, please leave a like and tag along. This video will be split into three parts. Uh, first, I will tell you what the second brain is or how this personal note-taking system can look. Second, I will tell you about the principles that the second brain is built upon. And thirdly, I will tell you about which tools I use and how my second brain looks like in uh, real life. So what is a second brain? The second brain is a digital note-taking tool where you store personal information that you would like to keep. Your brain is for having ideas, not storing them. Therefore, the second brain is a digital tool where you save ideas and memories and tasks and basically anything that you would like to remember at a later stage. Now, this second brain is built upon principles and systems. It's not a tool that you have to buy you can use you can build one using excel word whatever you could also go a lot fancier if you like but it's basically a, a mindset and a way of storing information that lets you keep everything you need to remember in one place the benefits of having a second brain is that information we consume get more useful i watch read and listen to lots of things every day but I only remember a fraction of it. But since I've started storing all my information in this system and go through it regularly, this problem went away. Because I remember more stuff, but also I know that I don't have to remember anything because I know there's a system for it where I will review it later. So let's look at a few examples of how I've been using this. So a friend of mine asked me if he could get some advice on some stocks he wanted to buy. I'm interested in this and I've read a few books upon the subject. However, that was a few years ago and I didn't really remember that much of it. So he asked me and I was like, okay, just give me a second. So I went into my second brain and I find my notes upon these books. It was very easy to find and I sort of skimmed them quickly and then I called my friend and we talked about it and I could sort of recall what I've been reading about and I could give him a lot of advice. Another example could be this video. A few months ago, I wrote a blog post about my second brain and I did a lot of research and of like how to build it and I wrote a script and everything. And I stored all that information inside my second brain. So when it was time to film this video, I didn't have to start anew. I just sort of went into my second brain and puzzled out what I needed and sort of used it to build this script. And then I started filming. Okay, time for part two, the principles of the second brain. So. The second brain is built upon a principle called CODE, which stands for Collect, Organize, Distill and Express. Collect is the habit of storing everything you want to remember in one place. You don't ever want to hold anything in your brain. As soon as you've encountered something that you would like to recall, place it into the second brain. This could be tasks. It could be interesting pieces of information, it could be notes on some book you read or something. Everything that you want to remember, write it down and place it into a system. That is the first habit called collect. The step is to organize everything that you collect. And this is built on another set of principles called PARA, which stands for Project, Areas, Resources and Archives. And the main idea is that you want to store information related to these different areas. So like, I'm going to go through them each in turn, but uh, you want to sort of figure out in which areas your information fits and then leave it there so you know that when you want to find information, you just have to go to the right area and sort of look for it there. So projects are information that's related to well-defined goals. Let's say, for example, that you're... I don't know, building a house and you're, you read up on how you do it. Then you could create a project called house building. And like if you read something about how to build a house or if you want to sort of write down what materials you're using, you store everything related to that single project 
in one area. Another example could be like if you want to write a blog post, then when you do the research, you store everything you want to remember into a project called blog post. Areas refers to a sphere of activity with a standard to be maintained. Since everything in life can't be as clear as a single project, uh, we need a place to store information uh, about sort of other important aspects about our life. Some examples could be relationships, uh, house, finances, traveling, home. I like to think that areas you store information that's less specific. If you encounter some like IDs for renovating, you could store it in the house area. It isn't like a project where you just need to organize everything and you're going to do it very soon. But it could be like a place where you store information. And I used to like use project areas interconnected. Like I store a lot of information into areas and then I could move them and, and turn information from the areas into projects that are very specific. The third part in organizing is called resources. And resources are for information that you feel are important, but you don't really know where you, could, where you should save it. Let's say, for example, like I like to drink tea a lot, but it isn't like important. I don't have an area called tea because I do it a few times. It's just something like quirky that I would like to save. Then I, then I store it in resources. Uh, because then I know later if I sort of want to find something random, then I can go to resources. The last part is called archives, and that's where you store everything that isn't being used anymore. So completed project, information in areas that aren't important, uh, uh, resources that just been sitting there for too long and you don't know what to do with it. You don't want the first three categories to be maxed out and full because you want them to be kind of easy to navigate and useful. And then everything that's sort of just sitting there and you don't really interact with it, move it to archives. There you can keep it, but it's more okay that it, it's filled up because you have like these other three areas that are active and that you can use uh, all the time. Okay, so now we talked about the para concept for a while. Let's go back to the code concept, to the bigger concept. So we talked about collect and we talked about organizing. So then we arrive at part three, which is called distill. And as we store more and more information, we need to make that information manageable and searchable. So it's effective for us in our everyday use. Therefore, we need to distill the information. And I sort of, I think the still is the most important part because if you just collect the information and then you just let it sit there, it's not going to be useful. But if you have the habit of sort of going into your second brain to get stuff, to organize it, to sort of summarize your notes and your captures, uh, then it gets very powerful. Okay. So what you want to do, what I do is that uh, a few times a week I sit down and I sort of try to distill my second brain. Uh, I go through notes and try to summarize them. I try to make them shorter. I go through uh, tasks and manage to remove such that I've done. And I sort of add in new things. And doing this both help you remember more. Like if you go through your notes, you remember them more often. Uh, but it also helps you to sort of know where everything is. And you, as you break it down and make it more and more searchable, it's easier and easier to sort of just go in quickly and find what you need. The last part of code is called express. And that means that the inf information that you gather shouldn't just be stored, it should be used. And I think this is important to have in the back of your mind as you gather information. Mindset stops you from becoming a hoarder and just sort of gathering up information and never using it. So. Along, all, along the whole process, collecting, organizing, distilling, try to think of, okay, what will I do with this in the end? And that, what you do with it could be pretty much anything. It could be writing a blog post, filming a video, uh, building a project for work. I, I use that when I'm teaching. Maybe it's not possible for every work, but for a few types of work. Or just being like well read up on things. But you need to think about 
okay, how will I use this information? And if you isn't going to use it, then you probably shouldn't be storing it because that's just a waste of time. The most important part is that we use the information to enrich our lives in some way. Welcome back. Okay, so now that we have talked about how the second brain works, I'm going to show you how I how my own second brain looks like and how I use it. So I have three different kinds of tools when I use my second brain. I have things that we have right here. I use a tool called Notion and I use a tool called Obsidian. And I use them somewhat differently and so I thought I'd show you. So let's start by taking a look at things. So things is my task manager. Here I store things I have to do. Uh, I have this inbox feature that is used for capturing things. I mostly capture using my phone. I could just add the plus sign on my phone and capture something. I have the app installed so there so I simply input tasks and as I encounter them. Uh, then I have everything organized into areas here. Below if each area, so here we have YouTube and blogging, I have all of these projects and then I sort of just input tasks into them as I go along. Then what I do is that once a week I go through my entire, every all of my tasks and projects and sort of prioritize them. I use these tags to make sure I know what I have to do, what is waiting, what is important and then I just do some. And then it has the today feature which is also really nice. So here I input things I have to do every day and this is a salary so I have a lot of things to do today. The second tool I use for capturing and storing information is Notion. And I use Notion for storing, storing information that is more formal. Uh, things, like, things that I pick up from books, videos, podcasts and so on. Things that aren't really actionable but I still want to sort of remember I keep here. I like to treat Notion as a place where I can throw anything. It doesn't need to be summarized or thought out as in Obsidian. And it doesn't need to be a task, as in things. I just feel that it is important to have a place where I just can organize whatever. So I use Notion a lot for write, writing scripts, uh, creating lists, uh, jotting down book summaries and stuff like that. I usually use Notion when I'm at my computer. And as you can see, here is my second brain. I have project areas, resource and archive. So if I go into projects, these are projects that aren't started. Here are projects related to sort of like this online thing. Here are some related to exercise, music, learning Spanish, things I've completed. So let's take my project for creating videos. So if I go in here, I sort of have these, this is a, this is a list of IDs. And then what I do is that I sort of organize what I'm doing. So here are things I'm writing outlines for, here are things I'm doing research for, here are things I have published as a blog because I always start with blogging and then I sort of turn that into a YouTube video. And here are things I do use for script, filming, filming, editing, publishing. That's one way I use my second brain. Then in, if we go shortly into areas it looks like this. I have different areas and here I store you know information that aren't that specific. So if we were to go to let's say productivity here i have some like productivity ids and things that i have written out uh, if we go back to spanish for example spain Panska, uh, here i have like everything related to spanish that i just stored that isn't really a project it's just sort of good things to know that i've stored here and resources looks like this it's basically just a list with random things that i didn't don't really know where to place and archives looks like this. It is, I don't have that much in archives, but things that are don't that isn't relevant anymore is here. Uh, I use Notion for a few other things, but that's beside the point as well. Now the last tool that I use is called Obsidian, and I treat this very differently from how I treat Notion. Where Notion is a place for just dropping anything, uh, Obsidian is the opposite. Here I try to be quite intentional with what sort of information I put in here. Therefore, information that I find very valuable is put into Obsidian. So Obsidian is basically a note-taking system. 
uh, let's see, these different dots are nodes and you can see they are connected to each other. I have a video about how I use Obsidian to think and how it sort of works a little bit that you could check out if you like. Here I just want to show you briefly what it looks like. So I basically use Obsidian to sort of write down IDs. So let's take, so here I have a note about evidence-based learning. And what's great with Obsidian is that you can link notes together by bidirectional linking. So here is a note about evidence-based learning and here's a note about spacing. Then you can sort of jump between these notes. Then I can jump into another note that I've written. So Obsidian is built up of notes and text and you use this linking feature to connect the notes so you can sort of follow which IDs and facts are related to each other. So I use Obsidian to build understanding of things and sort of connect things with each other. And in the terms of the code, I like to see Obsidian as the distilled place, like information that, information that I have sort of processed and sort of tried to internalize into myself, I place into Obsidian. So I try to be very intentional with how I write my notes and how I place them in there. I try to make the information kind of short and I try to make it very intentional and very well written so I can sort of use it later. So that was how, I use, how my second brain looks like. Uh, I have a lot of different tools but I find that is pretty useful and helpful uh, because you can sort of use them for different things. I wouldn't want to go more than three though because it is like a lot to manage, but I feel like I have found a good balance. Now, before we finish up, I would just like to say that I, under no circumstances, am the person who has figured all this out. Uh, I first encountered the second brain from Ali Abdal's uh, YouTube video about it. And then I read a lot about the idea is, is coined by Tiago Forte. And I read a lot about it on his uh, blog and website. Uh, but, Anyways, if you stayed up up until now, thank you for listening. Uh, thank you for being here. Your support is very much appreciated. And until next time, bye-bye.